Man, you guys, it has been a crazy few weeks to say the least. But I'm still here. Uh, I still want to make some recipes for you guys. And this bun de sal recipe, I'm hoping you guys do have flour at home because it will require flour. But if you have flour, sugar, eggs, butter, and milk, you can make this recipe. If you don't, just let me know in the comments below what you do have and I can help you adjust accordingly depending on what you have available. If you don't know what pan de sal is, it's like the bread of the Philippines. They're these delicious fluffy rolls and every time I make them, I eat at least one every single day. I dip it in hot chocolate. It is so good. If you haven't already, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. Sign up for email updates so that you can hear about classes, events, and more. Links will be in the description below. Let's get baking. I like to use a stand mixer because I'm lazy and it's easier, but you can most certainly mix and knead this dough by hand. So in a stand mixer, add four and a half cups of all-purpose flour or 585 grams. Next, add two teaspoons of instant yeast. And if you have active dry yeast, put in two and one quarter teaspoon. Mix the yeast well into the flour because next we're gonna be adding one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt or any salt that you have, it's fine. Don't let the salt make direct contact with the yeast because it will kill your yeast. Next, we're gonna add one third cup or 70 grams of granulated sugar. I'm just gonna mix this up and I put in my dough hook attachment since we are gonna be kneading bread. Next, add two large eggs. People say to whisk it with the rest of the liquids and then add it, but to me, it doesn't really matter. Just mix it well. Next, I'm gonna pour in one and one fourth cup of milk, which is 285 grams. Make sure it's not too hot so it doesn't kill the yeast. Just add enough milk until all the flour has been picked up. You might not have to use all of the milk. But if there's still flour at the bottom of your bowl and you used all of it up, just add a few more splashes until all the flour has been integrated into the dough. You can use a spatula to scrape the sides of the bowl, but I recommend turn off your stand mixer. Uh, this is a little bit dangerous, which is no good. After all that's been integrated, add three tablespoons or 43 grams of unsalted butter at room temperature. Add the butter in little chunks and just wait for your stand mixer to mix it all up. You can also use salted butter. It's no big deal. I've done it before. Your dough does not end up being over salted. So the only thing left to do here is wait. I bump up my stand mixer to medium speed and I test it every few minutes to see if the dough had been properly kneaded. And how you do that is called the window pane test. Stretch out your dough until you can see through it before it breaks apart, which means you're done kneading. Now make sure you don't over knead your dough, which is very easy to do in a stand mixer. After that, just collect all your dough, oil your bowl, set the dough in, cover it and let it sit until doubled in size. So while we're waiting for that, tell me in the comments below, how do you eat your pan de sal? And have you even had a pan de sal before? After your dough has doubled in size, push out all the air bubbles, take it out, and then start dividing your dough into evenly sized pieces. You can make about 24 standard sized rolls with this dough, but I like smaller pan de sal, so I cut more. I end up with like 32. Pan de sal is known for its breadcrumb coating, but if you don't have breadcrumbs, you can take stale bread, crunchy toast, or some sweet biscuits you have lying around and just crush it up. It's a nice and fine texture on the pan de sal, which I love. Take your dough pieces and roll each one into a pretty ball. I like to fold the dough upon itself and then do a swirly hand motion, slightly pressing the dough down on the surface to seal the bottom of the dough. Then cover each dough ball in your breadcrumbs and then place on a baking pan lined with parchment paper. Do this to all of your dough balls, cover it with either plastic wrap or in my case, an unscented trash bag and then let the dough sit in room temperature for about 45 minutes to an hour. You can do the poke test to see if it's ready to bake. If you poke the dough and it springs back halfway, it's ready. If it springs back all the way, it still needs time to rise. And if it doesn't spring back at all, you've overproofed it and it may deflate in the oven. You can press the air out and then re-roll the dough if this happens. 
Preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and bake these buns for about 20 to 25 minutes or until the tops are golden brown. And there you have it, freshly baked fluffy pan de sal. I asked you earlier, how do you eat your pan de sal? This is how I eat mine. Almost every single pan de sal that I bake ends up being dunked in hot chocolate. <laughs> it's nostalgic. I can't get enough of it. So although I gave you guys a recipe, the temperature and the conditions of the ingredients that you used, as well as the environment that you're in, will produce slightly different batches of pan de sal each time you make it. But with more practice and more often that you make these breads, the better it will come out because you'll know what to expect each time you make it. Also, I wanted to ask you guys, what would you be interested in learning from this channel? Let me know your insights, tell me in the comments below, or go ahead and shoot me a direct message on Instagram. I'd love to hear from you guys. Well, that's it, that's all I got for you guys. Hopefully you are able to make delicious, fluffy pan de sal at home. And if you found this video useful, go ahead and click that like button, press subscribe, and I'll see you guys in next week's video. Bye!